Welcome back to Exponential Africa, where we're at the Singularity University Global Summit. It's been an incredible three days of learning and exploration, and we are here to make sure that we bring you the very best in thought leadership and innovation so that we can future-proof Africa and be leaders in the future. We're very lucky to have uh, CEO and Associate Founder Rob Nell in the studio with us today. Th Rob, thanks for being here. Oh, it's a pleasure. I'm, I'm delighted. Thank you for inviting me. So it's been an incredible, incredible journey with, with Singularity, and you've been there since the beginning. How did you get started, and, and how, can you take us back to the early days? Yeah, it's, a, it's, a, it's been an amazing journey um, for me personally, as well as just with this incredible uh, global ecosystem we have. And you know, having people like you as part of it uh, around the world is, has been more fulfilling than I could have ever imagined. Um, but I, my, my roots, I'm an engineer and an entrepreneur. Um, I started a company building robotics and automation for cancer research and drug discovery. Had an amazing journey with that. Ended up selling that company to Agilent, working there for a while. And, and, and it was a place where I actually um, built leading edge cool robotics, but it was for scientists who were, who were truly curing cancer. And so I felt fulfilled as, a, as an innovator that I wasn't making cheap plastic trash. I was making stuff that was improving humanity. And so after I left Agilent, I was looking for how to make a bigger difference. And I run into Peter Diamandis at another event. It's actually a Tony Robbins event. And, and they had just started Singularity University. This is the end of 2009. Yeah. And he's like, we just started this amazing thing. And, and you know, Peter, cr crazy, amazing, charismatic, per visionary, right? And I'm like, that sounds really cool. I attended the first executive program, the week-long program. And, and I, I walked in the door just, you know, thinking I'm the, I'm the expert in robotics and biotech because I'm a geeky Silicon Valley tech entrepreneur. I totally know all the stuff. Yeah. And in my week, I'm like learning about all these robots and the biotech stuff. I was like, well, wait a minute. I didn't even know this stuff was happening. How is that even possible? Yeah. And then I was learning about all these breakthroughs in neuroscience and nanotech that were converging to ultimately disrupt that old robotics business that I'd built. I didn't know about those. And so at the end of my week at the exec program, I joked to everybody, not really joking, thank goodness I sold that business when I did, because it was in trouble, I didn't even know it. But actually the bigger piece for me was that there's um, amazing opportunities that we don't even see unless you have a place to go and look at this broad horizon of opportunities and technologies and an ecosystem that can support your journey with all those cr crazy technologies. I mean, if just hearing your journey, it feels like uh, similar to our journey with when I came to my EPI, I had that similar experience. Yeah. I was just blown away. Mind was, you know, stretched to, to the nth degree. And then I was, you know, really wanted to keep going with this, with this incredible organization that wants to, you know, make the future better. It's an amazing place, an amazing ecosystem that I think a lot of people find their own journeys through through um, and, and, and increasingly around the world. Yeah, and I mean, it's, just, it's all around this common mission and purpose. Well, you know, what is the Singularity mission? Yeah, so, so really from the beginning, it was about helping people understand exponential technologies and, and how to navigate the, the change that technology is bringing to our lives and, and where it can take us. And, and so, so truly, Ray and Peter have been visionaries about um, articulating exponential technologies, the superpowers that come with it. And then the institution and this global ecosystem now is about how do we bring people together to serve this higher purpose of, of, of addressing and solving the global grand challenges, right? The UN Sustainable Development Goals, they map very nicely to our framework of an entrepreneurial approach to solving the world's biggest problems. That's awesome. And uh, I mean, you, you've seen this growth over the last uh, 11, 12 years. It's been phenomenal. Yeah. And I'm sure it's, you know, it's, 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 the, the, it's changed from being, you know, uh, you know, coming out of Silicon Valley and now you're in, you know, multiple countries around the world. Right. Um, you know, how, how have you seen, what are some of the highlights that you've seen over, over the last 11 years? Well, I mean, there's too many to mention, um, but, you know, a few things that maybe I'm most proud of um, is, is, is maybe something that you actually represent directly. So, you know, a big plug for South Africa and That's some right. of the things that you brought. But, but um, from the beginning, one, one of the things that happened was that individuals from all over the world would come to these executive programs and they'd get a completely different perspective of what's possible, where the future's going, the pace that it's heading, and they'll go back home and then try to tell everybody about it. And everyone's like, whoa, like what? You sound crazy. Like, I don't even know how to interact with you anymore. And, and, and actually, most of those people that came early, they were already the crazy people. And then we sort of helped 10x that crazy, right? We just took them to a whole other level. Yeah. And so when they come back, two things happen. One, people just like, I, I don't even know what you're talking about. And so it's very dismissive. Um, or it's counterproductive, where you just scare people. 
people like freak out. You're like, your job's totally gone. It's amazing. Yeah. And people don't know how to take it, right? And so we have some responsibility to help people with their integration and how to take it back. And so, so really we started creating this, this idea of how do we empower people to, to plug in and support and build local ecosystem and a support network everywhere in the world. And that turned into our chapter programs and our country partnerships, ultimately, yes. which you, you are one of the best representatives of, right? And, and it's not about creating singularities all over the world. No, it's about how do we learn what's amazing about an ecosystem and a region and plug into it, help inspire uh, different people to come together in new ways, to be innovative and to shape the future, and then connect it globally to our whole amazing ecosystem. You know, I think it's, it's just amazing that you've actually achieved this, this global community. I think it's one of the amazing things that you've, that, that, that you've actually managed to, to build because it's not an easy thing to, you know, to grow multiple uh, countries at the same time yeah. while, and scaling it all out, you know, with multiple different uh, right. touch points. Yeah. So I think that's, you know, just uh, it's well, incredible. And, I, and it feels like it's just the start of the journey. Oh, yeah, we have just begun, right? And so today we've got seven, soon to be eight country partnerships, right? And, and I, I would say the, the reason it has worked is because the partners that we have are people like you. They're amazing partners who we share this common purpose, right? We're in it for something bigger than our own little businesses, right, than what we're doing. Because we know that if we come together and directionally stay aligned, something amazing will happen, right? Yes. There's a lot of messy bits, right? You know all too well, right? There's a lot of messy bits. But as long as we, we stay aligned on where we want the world to go and, and how we're going to continue to contribute to it, amazing things happen. And, and I'll just say, you know, our partners have been incredible to work together. Like half of the problems get solved. I don't even know about it. I know there's problems, but we don't, we don't have time. We don't have the resources. We don't have people. And they get solved by the community, right? The yes. community's done an amazing job of, of really solving problems, sharing them, and being influential globally. And, and again, South Africa's been an amazing so role model with technologies, with platform, with community interactions, communications, just so many things that you build a template and then you share it with all the other groups. And now they, they're starting from up here and they can do great things from there. Yeah, I mean, I, th I think this whole sense of the global by design community is really, is really, uh, there's something special there. I mean, we've learned from all the different countries. We've learned from you guys. Like, it's just been, for us, it's been an incredible, incredible uh, discovery yeah. of, of what's possible. Yeah. Um, and, you know, you talk about this technology as this liberating force um, or resource. You know, why, why is it imperative to engage in this transition? Yeah, uh, so, so I think there's, there's a couple different um, levels that we can, can look at that. Um, you know, Peter Diamandis has, has the six Ds of exponentials. It's, it's just like an easy framework to understand how to, how to even think about exponential technologies. And it's as technologies become uh, digitized, they become extremely deceptive and disruptive because they're effectively dematerializing, demonetizing, and democratizing the products and services of our lives and the value of those products and services, which basically means they're going to have a big impact on like society and industries and everything. And, and so how do, we, how do we lean into that and, and do things in a different way? And what's the ultimate opportunity? And, and so Peter sort of framed this idea of, of, of shifting from scarce to abundant, right? So, so as technology becomes more and more democratized, it means the access becomes more and more ubiquitous. Um, and for us, it, it means that more and more people are innovating in different ways everywhere. And so it ends up giving everyone superpowers. So you can do new things that we didn't even imagine possible before. Um, and, and, and ultimately, long term, it does mean that we can address the hardest problems, the biggest problems, the, what we call the global grand challenges. Yeah. And, and, and the way I like to describe it is, is through these technologies, we can ultimately solve and unlock the scarce uh, uh, resources that are limiting or creating uh, tension and anxiety in society today. So food, clean water, uh, shelter, education, healthcare, all of these can be heavily um, uh, supported, helped, and, and influenced through technologies. They're not technology problems though, right? These are, these are really social, political challenges yeah. that technology can help unlock in some, some new ways. And, and so as energy gets cheaper and cheaper at this exponential curve, right? Solar, the adoption of solar, the capacity of solar is on an extraordinary exponential curve, which means at some point, as that can, technology continues to progress, 
it is going to be very, very cheap to drive anywhere because we're electrifying everything, right? Yeah. Um, at some point, energy is so cheap that it means transportation is very inexpensive. It means food is virtually free because food is just an energy problem. It means water is clean because clean water is just an energy problem. We have now connectivity through, through Google Loon, OneWeb satellites, Starlink from, from, from uh, Elon, Elon's company, where these big companies are trying to connect everyone on the planet to the internet. And they have their own business models to sell ads or whatever. But if everyone is on the internet, it means everyone has access to the greatest education tools that have ever existed. And the things that we have today are only the start of the tools that we'll have 10 years from now. Yeah. So, and Peter, his, his forecast is within five to seven years, everyone's connected to the internet. Everyone, equitably, at 5G bandwidths, right? And, and so now you're at this point where if you have the greatest education tools, you're gonna to see a rise of education in humanity that's extraordinary. Now, this is a, talk about a liberating force. If everyone on the planet has access to degrees at MIT and the latest AI technologies, something extraordinary can happen, right? Yeah. And if you have, you have access to IBM Watson doctor in the cloud, you now have access to the greatest doctor and healthcare information that's ever existed. Now we're in a world where baseline for everyone can be better than what we can pay for as the richest in the West. That's an extraordinary opportunity. It's super exciting. Yeah. yeah. Now, will we create that future? I don't know. That, that future is not determined at all, right? And, you know, you, you look at where we're at in 2019, politically, there's a huge wave of resistance as a, as a reaction to change, right? And this is how I would just qualify the state of the world today. Technology is accelerating. It's creating more and more pressure on our world. Things are changing at a faster and faster rate. And most people don't have a good framework for understanding that pace of change. And we sure don't have a good vision of where it's taking us, right? Even, in fact, the opposite may be true, where increasingly Hollywood and the media out there is just bombarding us with the dystopian Hunger Games zombie apocalypse scenario of the future. So, so it's creating all this tension, all the jobs are being disrupted, and the only vision of where it's taking us is a zombie apocalypse. Well, nobody wants that. Yeah. So, so, so it's an easy political vehicle where you just say, no, no, technology bad, we don't want to go there, so let's retrench and go backwards. And I fear that's, the, that's sort of the, the political vibe that we have globally, and the rise of populism is in big part, I believe, to this reaction to technology and change. It's almost the antibodies of change. It's the antibodies of change. Yeah. And so how do you address an antibody? Well, first, we need to know the target. Where do we want to go? And then you plant lots of seeds all over the place to attack those antibodies and eradicate them. And so, so we need to shift the narrative as to where we're going so that everyone can see a positive, hopeful future that's credibly possible. And then we do the work. We create the roadmaps of how to get there. We solve those problems and we, we show how everyone is going to inclusively be part of the solution and that future that we're creating. Wow, so super exciting. Thanks, thanks so much for your time. It's been uh, really insightful. Great. And uh, hope you guys enjoyed that. Uh, if you like this episode, make sure to subscribe and like our page on uh, YouTube and the podcast. And Rob, thanks so much for your time. We look forward to the next 10 to 25 years with you. Mick, Enjoying thank, the journey. And thank you for being part of the SU community and no, being, being a leader in it. And uh, I look forward to seeing you in South Africa as well. Yeah.